February 24th, 12.14pm, District Court, courtroom number 9. The court will now reconvene for the trial of Ms. Lana Sky. Ema didn't come back. Allow me to call the next, the next witness to the stand. The officer in charge of guarding the evidence room the day of the crime. Witness, please state your name and occupation. Me, partner? Oh, I'm just a man, same as you, wandering the trails of civilization. Occasionally helping the elderly cross intersections when needed. Yes, you get it. Oh, I know, you're a patrolman. As my name, if you listen hard enough, you can hear the howl and wind calling it out. To be exact, it's Jake Marshall, Your Honor. <laughs> Howling wind? I've never heard Edgeworth described that way before. Now, Mr. Marshall, let me ask you something. You were in charge of guarding the evidence room the day of the crime took place. Is this correct? According to the papers, partner. And what do you mean? A desperado's soul is as boundless as the desert sands. No paper can sum it up. Maybe it's best we get on with this quickly. Please share with us your testimony of the day of the crime. In plain old English. Day of the crime. My job was to keep a wary eye on that bone orchid. Orchard. Orchard. <laughs> they said I was supposed to make rounds three times a day, but that ain't my style. Besides, the room's protected by two security systems anyway. I remember right, I was at a street side saloon at the time it went down. I'm just an innocent traveling man, so if you're out of ammo, it's time I hit the trail. Can't say I particularly care for your attitude. Can't say I care for your beard, but you don't see me complaining. Wait a minute. What do you mean by two security systems? I mean the security cameras and the ID card reader. Reckon even a cowpoke like you knows about those. Yes, well, what about the fingerprint activated locks on the evidence lockers? Fingerprint activated locks? What kind of newfangled doohickeys are those? He's not being very helpful. He's not that good with machines. Always following orders. Everyone's got their weaknesses, now don't they, Mr. Prosecutor? This one seems like trouble. Okay, Mr. Wright, he's all yours. Cross-examination. Okay, so we know that there's a third system that he doesn't know about, since it's been mentioned that that third system, the fingerprint activated locks, are a thing that he was not aware of. I'm not sure where that helps us too much just yet, so let's just start pressing and see where we get. <laughs> exactly did you keep an eye on the evidence room? I just made sure nothing moved in the security camera monitor. That room's so still, even time died in there. I was just a caretaker who interred the, interred the recordings. You interred them? Videos of nothing ain't that useful. Aren't that useful. <laughs> he said, oh, I thought he'd say ain't, but he didn't. <laughs> when the time would come, I'd erase the tape. Nothing unusual is recorded. Tapes would be erased every six hours. Each time I'd erase a tape, it felt like I was erasing a part of my life. This guy has flair for the dramatic, but it isn't going to do him any good. Fl flair? It's, it's flair, like a AIR flair. It's not. It's not like a flair, like like you would shoot up from a boat if you were like in an emergency. <laughs> <laughs> So in actuality, you don't physically enter the evidence room? You made your rounds on the day of the crime, right? Ain't you heard a word I said, partner? Say so he says ain't. I knew he'd say ain't. <laughs> I told you that ain't my style. Um, I'm afraid I don't understand. No desperado I know that lets rules get in his way. No, 
only Desperados I know join the police force. Well, good for them. Hey, Cap. So, Officer Marshall, on the day of the crime? Just between you and me, they didn't set foot in the evidence room that day. There was a rubber glove stuck in the victim's locker. Do you know anything about that? Sorry, partner. Can't say I do. I haven't been in that crypt in weeks. How does this guy avoid being fired? used to be a detective, so you've used the evidence room in the past, correct? Of course. Back in the day, my luck was a gold mine of evidence. And yet, you didn't know about the fingerprint locking mechanism? Sorry, partner. You ain't good with machines. I couldn't even tell you how a bike works. That's quite, uh, incredible. The sensors in the locker handles cannot be seen. It's well known that some detectives are unaware of their presence. Gumshoe said something like that, too. Anyway, it doesn't seem that this is relevant to the crime. Can you tell us what you were doing when the crime took place? Streetside Saloon. <laughs> what were you doing in a place like that? I was eating spaghetti. Not even angel steak lunches can beat that pile of bon bongol... Vongole? Vongole sepia pasta. Can you tell us you abandon your police duties to eat some noodles? Not all desperados eat tacos, partner. That's not what I meant. I hope this has at least taught you a lesson. That's strange. This is usually where Edgeworth says you do not want to raise this year. I'm just an innocent traveler, man. <laughs> Out of ammo, Officer Marshall? That's right, partner. Or as you call it, evidence. If you plan to pin me to this crime, then you better draw. Otherwise, you're just wasting my time. My steel horse is waiting to carry me back west into the sunset. Hmm. One thing seems clear. Despite being responsible for guiding the evidence room, the witness doesn't appear to have seen anything. Texans don't take orders from anyone. Everyone knows that. Apparently your superiors don't. Okay, I have a trump card up my sleeve, so I best keep my cool. Before I use it, though, I better up the ante. Okay, I think I'm supposed to just show him the evidence now, since I've pressed everything. Um, the evidence being... this. The fact that his fingerprints were found on a bloody handprint in the evidence room. Okay. Officer Marshall, doesn't it strike you as odd? That is, you being called in to testify like this. After all, you weren't in the security room at the time of the crime. And yet you dragged me down here. Explain yourself, partner. It's quite simple. You left a very large trail behind at the scene. Or to be exact, a handprint. Hm. Listen real good, partner. Like I said, I'm the caretaker of that crypt. I pay my respects, that is, make the rounds about once a month. It's only natural my fingerprints would be in there. I only wish it were, officer. But you see, your fingerprints were covered in blood. Witness, what's the meaning of this? Your bloodstained fingerprints were at the crime scene? Blood was wiped away, however. A luminal test clearly revealed this. What the A luminal. Luminal <laughs> clearly revealed this. Well, Officer Marshall? It seems to me. There ain't a person in this room with a head on his shoulders. I take you have an explanation then, Officer Marshall. About the blood-stained fingerprints? Very well, you may begin your testimony about your fingerprints. Found at the scene of the crime. Blood-stained fingerprints! Like I said, it's only natural for my fingerprints to be in that evidence room. One of them just happened to be at the same place as the blood-stained handprint. 
the murderer touched the lock of where my fingerprint was by chance. The blood stain and the fingerprint are completely unrelated. Or didn't you know the murderer was wearing gloves? See? I had nothing to do with it. Hmm. The witness's explanation appears valid. Although there's room for doubt. Life wouldn't be fun without any doubt, partner. The defense may not cross-examine the witness. This guy's hiding something. I can feel it. Now's my chance to prove it. Okay. The murderer was wearing gloves. He's correct about that. I'm not sure why he knows that, though. That's because you... How did you put it? Pay your respects once a month? Yeah, that's right. That, and one more thing. That locker happens to be mine. What? What do you mean? I mean what I said. That's the locker I used when I was a detective. The locker I still use. All that's in there now, though, is a heap of broken dreams. I see. It'd be strange if my friends weren't all over that locker. Apparently, his fingerprint data was never removed from that locker's programming. He must have been using the fingerprint lock all this time without ever knowing it. Updated in the quote record. One of them just happened to be at the same place as the blood from Henry. <laughs> so then, what about the bloody handprint? Wasn't well, mine. It's no mystery. Please explain. My locker is covered with my fingerprints. It just so happened. The chances of that happening are a million to one. On the contrary, one could argue just the opposite. The chances of that not happening are a million to one. Get one thing straight, partner. You ain't gonna get no reward from me with a mere finger with a mere fingerprint. You wanna know why? Hold it. Unrelated? They're as different as night and day. Kinda like cereal and cereal. One's got to do with breakfast, well, that was a type of murder. That's right. Well, they're seemingly alike. They're totally different. I don't see what homonyms have to do with this. How do you know that? I may be a loner, but I still do my job. I keep up on the reports. There was a blood stain at the scene. Supposed to be left by the murderer. That's right. Found on Detective Gumshoe's locker. However, no fingerprints were detected on that handprint. Oh yeah, I think we tried that too. Hmm. So that would mean the murderer wearing gloves happened to place their hand on top of Officer Marshall's fingerprint. That's the only logical conclusion. I, I would have thought doing that would mess up the print that you're touching, especially if your hand is covered in blood. But I'm not really an expert on fingerprinting, so I could be wrong. <laughs> Are you starting to get the picture, partner? The picture? The seal of blood in the desert. It's just food for the buzzards. There's only one reality, and that's this. The security tape. So long as my trail isn't in there, you can't say otherwise. This isn't getting us anywhere, Mr. Wright. Please consider carefully where you're going with this cross-examination. yes Your Honor. Now then, continue your testimony, Officer Marshall. Too bad it wasn't me in that video, right, partner? What do you mean by that? You want to tie me to this crime, isn't that right, partner? If so, that video is the only direct evidence you have. That video is next to useless. It's full of blind spots. Blind spots? Places you can't see. The camera's pounding back and forth. The floor isn't shown. If someone was familiar with the camera's position, they could leave the room without being caught on tape. We don't have time for your speculations, Mr. Wright. 
Well, Mr. Wright, if you can show us evidence in this video that indicates Officer Marshall was present, please do so now. Uh, oh, I do have evidence, actually. Um, but I forget whether I'm supposed to pick show evidence or something else. I'm gonna show evidence. Very well. Allow me to point out your mistake, Officer Marshall. Tread carefully, Mr. Wright, or you might wind up being the one making the mistake. Now then, let's have another look at the video. Show us this incriminating evidence of the witness. Officer Jake Marshall. Ah, this video, everyone's favourite part of the game. <laughs> okay, so, we need to get near the end of the video here. So his locker's this one, right? So if we keep watching, you can see, there's his locker again. We want to keep looking at it, and we get back the other side again. There it is again. You can see that there's a piece of cloth poking out of the, of the locker now. The only possible way for that to have gotten into the locker is for someone to have opened it, and these lockers have fingerprint sensors, which means the only person who could have opened it is Officer Jake Marshall. Bringing our attention back to the security camera is a mistake I'm afraid you'll soon not forget, Officer Marshall. The days are short in Texas, and so are our tempers. Could you sum up what you have to say in eight words or less? Very well. You can clearly be seen in this video. Exactly eight words. Not bad, partner. The key lies in a certain locker shown in the video. That locker with the white cloth sticking out. That was the witnesses, I believe. Now then, let's rewind the video a bit. I'd love to not be able to skip this video as we watch it over and over again. <laughs> it's just got better music this time. Oh, the white cloth! It's gone! What's the meaning of this, Officer Marshall? When the crime took place, the white cloth wasn't there. Then, it suddenly appeared. There's only one explanation. Officer Marshall, you were in the evidence room at the time of the crime. What's more, you opened your locker when the camera was turned away. Order, order! It would seem it's the only... Hold your horses. Sorry, partner. But you got the wrong man. So what if my locker was open? That doesn't mean I'm the one who opened it! The murderer needed to hide something, so he opened a locker and stuck it in. It's not my fault he happened to choose mine. Why is everyone staring at me like I'm a wanted man? This guy isn't just playing dumb. He really doesn't know. Uh, I hate to run on your parade. But you're the only person who can open that particular locker. Oh yeah? I call your bluff. You say you opened that locker? Now prove it. Well, it's got a fingerprint lock on it, so only the assigned detective's prints can unlock it. Indicate a love lights up when it's open. <laughs> uh, fingerprint sensor? Why does he put the word fingerprint in quotes? He knows what a fingerprint is. <laughs> He should have put the word sensor in quotes. He doesn't know how machines work. He knows what a fingerprint is. <laughs> He's a detective. <laughs> we talked about this earlier today. The lockers can only be opened by the detectives they belong to. What kind of crazy talk is this? Well, Detective Gumshoe did mention something about this. In any case, the locks aren't that obvious. There are even some people on the force that don't know about the fingerprint locks. So, Sheriff, what do you have to say, in eight words or less? I only got one word for you, partner. No! <laughs> no! 
<laughs> order, order, order. Witness, explain yourself. If this is a joke. It's the worst I've ever heard. I assure you, this is no joke, Officer Marshall. Now then, please tell us what you were doing in the evidence room at the time of the crime. Ole, please answer the question. <laughs> what is he now, a bullfighter? That's alright, Officer Marshall. I believe we can figure the rest out from here. We can? Have a look at these floor plans. There is no place for someone to hide in the evidence room. Yet, Officer Meekins didn't see Officer Marshall. If that's so, then where was the witness? Seems Mr. Wright has an answer. That's right, the only possible conclusion. Well then, let's hear it. Where was Officer Marshall at the time of the crime? It seems like he could have hidden, you know, here, in the gap between the lockers and not been spotted, but that's not the correct answer. Uh, the correct answer is actually that he was Detective Goodman. Because uh, Officer Meekins didn't know the man's face, so it could easily have been, for example, Officer Marshall. Take that! Officer Marshall was standing right here. There? But that's... that's where the victim Detective Goodman was. Correct. Unless the man wasn't Detective Goodman. I believe the victim in the video is Officer Marshall. It was you, dressed up like Detective Goodman. That's preposterous. Officer Meekins witnessed the detective at the crime scene. Once he saw the man's face, he'd know for sure. I have point out, though, that Officer Meekins did not know Detective Goodman. He also testified about the man's reaction when confronted. I ran to the evidence room and asked him to show his card, sir. Yes, and how did Detective Goodman respond? He suddenly pulled a knife on me. Something about the officer's story puzzled me. If the man had had his ID card, why didn't he just show it? Yes, he would have needed it to enter the evidence room, so he must have been carrying it. The answer is simple. He couldn't show it. As you can see, Detective Goodman's picture is on his ID card. Well, I can't see it in, in, that, in that graphic there. It's, I can see it in this picture, but I, I just see like a little shiny square. <laughs> Oh, I get it. If he showed that, his cover would have been blurred. Officer Meekins would have realised the man wasn't Detective Goodman. Do you have anything to say to this, Officer Marshall? You've got quite an imagination, partner. You've got a term for that. It's called circumstantial evidence. Circumstantial evidence? He's still denying it? You're gonna have to do better than that to break a detective. Unless you have hard evidence proven I dressed up as the victim? Hmm. I can't say I particularly care for your uncooperative disposition. I can't say I care for your beard, but you don't see me complaining. Well, Mr. Wright, do you have any evidence proving me on a shadow of a doubt that Officer Marshall dressed up as the victim? Well, who am I kidding? I don't have anything like that. I can see the fear in your eyes, partner. Seems you're the one who couldn't take the desert the desert heat. Ack! <laughs> it's Kathy. <laughs> this can't be happening. It's so obvious he's the one. What can I do? Hmm. It looks like your lack of experience has finally been exposed. I'll pass on to you what someone told me when I was just starting out. When you've run into a ball with no place to go. Return to the basics. The basics? For me, that would be what Mia used to tell me. Phoenix, try thinking outside of the box. I shouldn't look for proof that Officer Marshall was in disguise. But rather I should look for evidence that came about because he was in disguise. Why do you think this locker was opened in the first place? What do you mean? There's no reason for Officer Marshall to open his locker at the time of the crime. 
Yeah, he did, despite the chance it might be discovered later, as it has been. Which means he didn't originally plan to open his locker. According to the defense's argument, Officer Jake Marshall dressed up as Detective Goodman at the time of the crime. Then, after the crime was committed, he opened his own locker for some unknown reason. The fact that a white cloth is sticking out of the locker seems to indicate that. He opened it in order to put the cloth inside. So, just what exactly is this piece of cloth? Perhaps... Perhaps the video is the key to all our unanswered questions. I don't have any evidence, so this video is mainly shot. Back to the video! <laughs> Very well, let's take yet another look at the security tape. After committing the crime, the witness opened the locker to put away the white cloth. Please show, show us why the witness had to open his locker. It's the video again! Oh, oh, everyone's favourite. Okay, so we want to fast forward a bit. Um, I know which part we're looking for. Um, we want to find when he starts fighting with Officer Meekins. There, you can see that there's blood from, you know, cutting Officer Meekin's hand on his jacket. And you can't go out of the evidence room and potentially be spotted wearing a blood-stained blood jacket. You've got to hide it somewhere. Take that! For some reason, you disguised yourself as Detective Goodman and entered the evidence room, though I don't know to what end, yet. Yet? However, something unexpected happened. Officer Meekins barged in on you. When asked to show your ID card, you pulled a knife on him. However, Officer Meekins panicked, and the white coat you were wearing was soiled with blood. A bloody white coat. You couldn't just walk out like that, so you hid the coat in your locker. Not bad, partner. <laughs> now then, Officer Marshall, are you ready to tell us the truth? Looks like I underestimated y'all. I hope you're happy now, Mr. Edgeworth. Two years ago, if you were only half as persistent then as you are today, we all wouldn't have to be here now, now would we? Officer Marshall, tell the court what you did. All of it. Alright. Seems the time has come. I had to do it that day. I couldn't just stand by and let it die. I stole the detective's ID and dressed like him. I planned to take out the evidence. I wasn't expecting Officer Meekins. I knocked him out. Then managed to escape. I knew which areas wouldn't be caught on the camera. There wasn't any murder in the evidence room at 515. So the supposed victim was really you. But there's one thing I still don't understand. Traces of a large quantity of blood were found on the floor of the evidence room. If no one was murdered, then how could that be? Officer Meekins managed to cut his own hand. My guess is he's the donor. Way too much blood for such a small donation. Phoenix is right, by the way. The blood has come from somewhere else. But we'll see about that in a while. <laughs> when you say it, you mean... You even have to ask, partner? SL9 incident. Two years, two, two years have passed since that case was closed. It was going to completely end with the transferal that day. Not if I have anything to do with it. That incident's not over. But what did you hope to accomplish by sneaking into the evidence room? When a case is closed, only that case's lead detective can look through the evidence. I wanted to have a look at it myself one more time. No matter what the cost. I don't care what anyone says, partner. That case is mine. But Officer Marshall wasn't in charge of that investigation. Why does he care so much about it? That day was my last chance, that's why I... Hold it. 
Why did you disguise yourself as Detective Goodman? That didn't make it look like Goodman was carrying out the evidence transfer. I'd be arrested for stealing evidence, which wouldn't get me anywhere. So you did it to pull the security camera. And the detective's ID card? Stole that the morning of the incident. So that really was why Goodman started filling out that lost item report. I returned his ID card. I left it on the floor in the prosecutor's office parking lot. The ID card I found was left there by Officer Marshall. So essentially, you managed to succeed despite your lack of foresight. What do you mean, partner? I mean, the fingerprint activated lock, of course. No matter how well you disguise yourself, you can't change your fingerprints. In the normal circumstances, you wouldn't have been able to open that locker yourself. But he could, because a rubber glove just happened to get stuck in the door. That means Detective Goodman must have opened the locker before Officer Marshall. He pulled a knife on Officer Meekins and tried to drive him off? Let's just say I was a little surprised. I only planned on being in the evidence room for no more than five minutes. I didn't think anyone would actually come in during that short time. Officer Meekins certainly is a one in a million type of person. Mistaking a detective for an intruder and claiming to be shown his ID, demanding to be shown his ID, I have to think a little more about his arrays this year. When did Edgeworth get so much influence? Anyway, he threw himself at me and ended up cutting him slightly. I'm sorry I had to turn out that way, with me knocking him out and everything. By the way, what happened to your knife? Oh, you mean this one? <laughs> I don't know what to say. Hmm. So you knocked off some Megan's out, and... <laughs> so that, that knife has actually been, like, has shed blood from a person, and he's holding it in a courtroom. <laughs> <laughs> so you did your research beforehand. Also going to the desert unprepared, don't leave long, partner. I didn't think it would make a difference, though. The security tape is erased every six hours. If all had gone as planned, no footage would have been left. However... Blood your coat in the struggle with Officer Meekins. If someone was in the security room when I came out, the jig would have been up. Opened my locker and stashed it in there. What was Officer Meekins doing during that time? What else? He was sleeping like a baby. So what you're saying is, on that day... But the blood found at the scene certainly indicates a crime took place. What are you, blind? The victim showing that tape is me, and I'm not dead yet, partner. So, you stole the evidence from the locker? Actually, no, I didn't. Why not? When I opened the locker, the evidence was already gone. What? Mr. Edgeworth, where is that evidence? It's still missing, Your Honor. Goodman's locker was already empty. Someone else stole the evidence. Officer Marshall, may I ask you one more thing? Fire away, partner. It's a free country. Just remember, I'm also free to decide whether or not to answer. Why did you do this? Stealing a detective's ID, injuring a police officer? A cab. <laughs> because A cab, that's why I did this. <laughs> This is no small offense. No, no, it's it's great. It's not even an offense. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Back to the case. Moreover, you're an officer yourself. Oh, gross. Ugh. This will have serious consequences. It can't just be forgiven with a simple cut in salary. Not that salary cuts are ever a valid solution. Like I said, this isn't your case. This one is mine, and I'll do anything it takes to get an answer I'm satisfied with. Hmm. The witness has an unusual amount of zeal. Let's hear more. Just forget the SL9 incident. You know why? I do know why. Um, I believe what we have to do is present 
the Eslon incident file because they have some evidence about why. Uh, can we open it up here? Uh, Joe Dark, Zero Motor, Upon Death. We can see one of his victims at the end there is Neil Marshall. And yes, they are related. Objection! Officer Marshall, I think I understand. I think I know why you care so much about the SL9 incident. Sounds like you've been sipping too much cactus juice, partner. I have the SL9 incident file here. The name Marshall is mentioned in here. In a list of murder victims. Neil Marshall. Are you related to this man? Neil Marshall. Yeah, I'm sure you've heard the name. Two years ago, he received the same lousy prosecutor award you got. What? A prosecutor? You must be talking about the King of Prosecutors Award. Now I remember. Prosecutor Neil Marshall. He handled the SL9 case before I did. That's right, he was killed, and the case fell into your hands. But what's his relation to you? He was... my brother. He was investigating the murders with Damon Gant, the then Deputy Chief of Police. The group of detectives I was part of worked under them. We were desperate to prosecute the killer. Joe Dark. My brother fought Dark and was killed. That was the first time Dark left behind any evidence. That was all we needed. He was... arraigned? Arraigned and incarcerated. The case was finally closed. At least according to the public records. What do you mean? My brother couldn't have been killed by Joe Dark. I knew my brother better than anyone. No one could have beaten him in a fight. And that's it? That's your reason for your insane actions? There's more to my brother's death than what the records say. No matter how much you try to hide it, you can't fool me. Well, at least one thing's for certain. Now we know what happened at the police department on the day of the crime. That was the last day the SL9 case could be reopened. Not satisfied with his resolution, Officer Marshall planned to steal the evidence. Disguising himself as Detective Goodman, he entered the evidence room. Officer Meekins confronted him, so he rendered him unconscious and fled. Yes, this mystery is finally being cleared up. No murder took place at the police department that day. Things that happen by chance never cease to amaze. At exactly the same time as the murder at the prosecutor's office, this fake murder was going on at the police department. Chance? It's gotta be more than just that. So if no one was murdered at the police department on the day of the crime, that means the murder in the prosecutor's office parking lot was the real one. Which in turn means only one person could have committed the crime. Chief Prosecutor, Lana Sky. But wait, a verdict wasn't reached in yesterday's trial. Objection. Which is why we examined the incident at the police department today. But there's only one reason the defendant was not convicted yesterday. There yet remains the mystery of the simultaneous murder at the police department. It seems to me this boy's got the draw in you, partner. All of the mysteries of the police department have been resolved, no doubt about it. Our, stole, our sole murder took place at the prosecutor's office. The only suspect is Lana Sky, and the testimony of one Ms. Angel Star is completely incontestable. If you have a response, make it a single word or less. Ugh! It's a single word. Arrest my case. Seems this trial's reached its conclusion. There's no room for doubt. Well done, Mr. Wright. Thanks to you, I didn't need to waste my time disproving the alleged murder at the police department. The 
there's no doubt what I proved today is true. The apparent murder at the security camera's tape really was fake. But I didn't realize... That would end up proving Lana guilty. I mean, it's sort of obvious if you think about it, Phoenix. Now then, the time for the verdict has arrived. This court finds the defendant... Your Honor, wait! Ema? The defense has an objection, a scientific objection! Right? What do you mean, right? Mr. Wright, are you this girl's guardian? Your Honor? Oh, uh, in a sense. Please, Your Honor, all I'm asking for is a minute of your time. Please hear me out. Mr. Edgeworth, please. I don't want to leave any loose ends. You want a minute? I'll give you three. I... I was kind of in shock. I mean, finding out the SL9 incident referred to the Joe Dark killings. Now that she mentions it, the names of both Sky Sisters were in that file. But that's when I figured it out. I mean, what Officer Marshall was trying to do that day. So I knew his fingerprint had nothing to do with the crime. That left only one thing. The other handprint. You mean the traces of blood found in Detective Gumshoe's locker? But no fingerprints were found in the room, right? No, but I figured if I examined it scientifically, I'd be sure to find a clue. So, I ran over there and looked at it again. So did you find something? Um... No! Huh? Sorry. I guess I'm not much of a scientific investigator after all. Um... Is that all? Please don't be mad. I'm just a high school student. I'm just an attorney. But Mr. Wright, those traces of blood are the only clue we have. We can't find something wrong with them. Please, Mr. Wright, you're a professional. If anyone can save Lana, it's you. Oh boy. Time's up. Now then, Mr. Wright. With regard to the incident at the police department, does any reasonable doubt remain? Um. It appears the defense is troubled by the other blood mark. Looking at the floor plans, a handprint was discovered around here. Is there a problem with this? Mr. Wright. I'm sorry I can't be of more use. But still, if you can't find anything wrong with that blood mark, Lana will be... Please answer my question, Mr. Wright. We don't have all day. Y yes, Your Honor. If ever I've needed to concentrate, it's now. What could be wrong with that handprint on Dr. Gumshoe's locker? Would there be something I'm missing? Objection! There is. This handprint left at the crime scene clearly shows a contradiction. The only thing that seems clear is your grasping, Mr. Wright. You've been staring pretty intently at those floor plans. Tell me, is there a problem with them? Yes, it is strange. Take a good look at these floor plans. Something is missing. Missing? You mean something hasn't been drawn on there? Yes, something that, when drawn, will completely change the meaning of the blood mark. Let us pray the defense isn't simply trying to buy time. Very well, Mr. Wright. With all this evidence here, there's got to be something I can use. The question is, which item can prove something is missing in the floor plans? Oddly enough, it's this. <laughs> the blue badger panel was in the evidence room, directly in front of that locker. Which means, while it was there, it's impossible for someone to have touched that locker. Which means... Take that. take that! What about that piece of plywood? The Blue Badger, mascot of the police force. Defender of truth, guardian of proof. Explain yourself, Mr. Wright. Please look at the floor plans of the crime scene. The blue badger is not here. So? So watch what happens when we put him in. 
This is where he was dancing at the time of the crime. Well? Well, what? <gasps> That's right, so long as Blue Badger is dancing here, it would be impossible to place a handprint at this spot on the locker. What? I'm not sure why they brought Jake back for this instead of just having Emo be there. So this means, uh, just what exactly does that mean? It means it can't be done. <laughs> What are you saying? Blood traces were undeniably found in that locker. Don't look at me, I didn't put it there. <laughs> Mr. Wright, think it through scientifically. Ema. On that afternoon, Officer Meekins was the one who brought the blue bandage to the evidence room, right? After he put it down, it would be impossible to leave a handprint in that locker. So that must mean this blood mark was left there before the blue badger was brought in. Just one moment, I will not allow such far-fetched balderdashery in my courtroom. It may sound far-fetched, Your Honor, but it's the only possible explanation. On February 21st, in the police department's evidence room, blood was spilled not once, but twice. But how? <laughs> one time was captured on this tape, taken by the security camera. Officer Meekins cut his hand, from which a trivial amount of blood fell. The problem is, the other time. Someone bled prior to the struggle thrown on this tape. It had to have been... It had to have been... Detective Goodman when he was really murdered. Objection! That's ridiculous. I refuse to accept your absurd claim. The murder portrayed in the security tape has been proven to be a fake. However, that does not explain the blood mark found on the locker. So then, assuming this murder you report really happened, when did it take place? I demand you show evidence that proves when it occurred. When did the first incident occur? To summarise, the defence claims that prior to Officer Meekin being cuffed by Jake Marshall, who was posing as Detective Goodman, Another incident took place in that evidence room. That's right, the blood mark on the locker proves this. Very well, then tell us. When did this first incident occur? As Mr. Edgeworth said, the proof must be presented. Proof that shows when the murder took place. There's only one piece of evidence that can show that. Now then, will the defense please present its evidence? What shows when the first crime took place? Uh, well, this piece of paper shows how people got into the room, and you have to get into the room to commit, commit the murder, so... It would have to have been... 777777... 7... <laughs> <Take> <laughs> if the crime took place inside the evidence room, then the killer would have to would have, would have had to enter it. And in order to do so, an ID card would have been required. An ID card? Oh! The ID card record! Officer Meekins brought the blue badger panel into the evidence to room at, let's see here, 4.50pm. the crime took place before that time, then it would be 4.40pm. Ah! Ah! Miss Miles Edgeworth! Just what have you done? Never would have figured you had the nerve, boy. Drop the act, witness. It doesn't take a lot of thought to figure out it couldn't have been me. Hmm. Nope, I ain't getting it. Hmm. I'm afraid I don't understand either. It's clear from the luminal test the blood was there. However, when the second crime took place, both Officer Meekins and Officer Marshall failed to notice the blood. That means the blood from the first crime was wiped away by the real murderer. I would have had just 10 minutes to murder the victim, carry his body away, and clean up the blood. Unfortunately, that's physically impossible. That would mean... The crime must have taken place before Mr. Edgeworth entered the evidence room. Let's look at the, look at the chart again. There's only one other card number remaining. 7777777. Talk about a lucky number. But wait, that doesn't make sense. How could Detective Goodman have entered the evidence room? Since there's no record of his card being used beforehand, he must have entered along with the real murderer. 
That's the only plausible explanation. He went in with 777777. Mr. Edgeworth, please look into this ASAP. Find down whose ID number is 777777777. <laughs> That's one seven too many, Your Honor. Unfortunately, I'm unable to look up the owner of that ID card. At least at present. What? Explain yourself, son. The ID number 777777 belongs to someone with a rank of captain or higher. Someone who's a so-called executive officer. Wait, seriously? Do people's ID numbers change when they get promoted, or...? That seems really confusing. We don't have the authority to inquire into such a person's identity. But that's ridiculous! Just how... I'm not finished talking, Mr. Wright. There is one situation in which we can be granted such authority. If an official charge filed against, filed against an executive is accepted. An official charge? You're all alike, aren't you? With your cover-ups and your forgeries. That's how the prosecutor's office operates. I take pride in my work, Officer Marshall. I would appreciate it if you would keep your slander to yourself. Slander, is it? Okay. Let me ask a question. Yes? No, not to you. To her. The defendant sitting over there. Your own little executive. Ooh, Lana? Don't be stupid. She's been charged with murder. Of course we've looked into up her ID number. And it's not 7777777. Don't play me for a fool, partner. That's not what I want to ask. All I want to know is one thing about that incident. The SL9 incident? Answer me this, Chief Prosecutor. In that trial two years ago, did you really only use legitimate evidence? You need the witness to repeat his question, Chief Prosecutor. I heard him fine, Mr. Edgeworth. Two years ago, I was in charge of the prosecution for that trial. At the time, we... Occasionally, we felt the powerlessness of the law. At least, I did. L Lana! I became prosecutor in order to suppress crime with the law. But before I realized it, we were the ones being suppressed by the law. Defendant, just what are you saying? I ask you again, Chief Prosecutor. During that trial two years ago, did you really present all the evidence in court? Can you look me, an investigator in that crime, in the eye and say that you did? Chief Prosecutor, you didn't. I don't have to, Officer Marshall. Why won't you answer him? Drastic crimes require drastic measures. That's just the way it is. We did what we had to do in order for him to get the verdict he deserved. But Lana! Even if... It involved forging evidence. See? That's what I'm talking about. No! No! Order! 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 Minus remarks cause such a stir. Chaos in the courtroom will not be quelled. The conclusion of the trial would have to wait until the following day. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, next time, the final investigation segment for Rise from the Ashes. I believe. Uh, day three investigation. I believe it's the final investigation segment, so... Look forward to that, um, but for now, that's it. Thanks for watching.